SELFSI, Spoken Easy Language for Social Inclusion. Um, we'll go on uh, in this session um, presenting Work Package 2, which is what Tatiana mentioned before. Um, this is going to be a joint uh, session, uh, a joint talk, focusing on the results of CELSI Work Package 2. I will present, I will mainly present Work Package 2 and a very small selection of results. Whereas some of my CELSI colleagues that will join me later will focus on some specificities uh, regarding spoken easy language in their countries. So, uh, so I'd like to start with a picture. This uh, is a cake, right? Uh, the whole cake, we can think of the whole cake as the project, the CELSI project. Each slice of the cake is a work package, a technical word that I'm going to explain now. A work package is a set of related research and practical activities with a leader, with specific aims, with a fixed time span uh, and a fixed duration. Specifically, work package two, uh, needs and research mapping, that's the title of work package two, is led by the University of Trieste and spanned six months, okay? The main aims of work package two are three. First, to set the basis for the development of spoken easy language recommendations, spoken easy language or cell recommendations. Then to give voice to cell communication, uh, to cell communication actors, and finally, to map their needs, strategies, and preferences in Europe. This is a European project. project. So Europe is our main focus, even though we also tried to get information about uh, these in other uh, extra European countries. Mm. Who are, before um, <laughs> this slide, uh, who are cell? actors who are spoken easy language communication actors well they are we we basically can divide them into two main groups professionals and end users professionals are people who work with users in several contexts for instance um, we can think of social workers we can think of special education teachers but professionals are also people who produce oral content. Uh, in this case, we can think of uh, broadcasters. Why not? Podcasters, but also journalists and many more, of course. Um, to achieve the aims of Work Package 2, we use the pretty traditional tool, the questionnaire. You can see uh, it here. A questionnaire is a set of questions designed to gather information from respondents, and our respondents are cell communication actors. Uh, wait, <laughs> yeah. A few words on the, on the questionnaire so you know more about it. Uh, what I'm about to say is also um, summarized in one of the posters on the wall, so you can go there and have a further look at the content. So our questionnaire was distributed online. It was multilingual, so it was prepared, written in several uh, languages, right? Uh, it was anonymous. Uh, it did not collect personal or identifiable information from respondents, such as their names or their home addresses or their email addresses. So we could not then identify 
the specific people who answered the questionnaire, but it included some demographic questions such as age, sex or education level uh, to better understand and then to better describe our participants and also to relate who our participants, respondents are to what they do, to their answers, basically. basically. In terms of questions, the questionnaire included open questions, encouraging free answers and closed questions that could be answered by selecting from a number of options, specifically from a rating scale that is known as Likert scale for those here who are academics and know what I'm talking about. I'd like now to focus very briefly on the languages of the questionnaire. We all uh, prepared a template in English, right? Because that's our working language, uh, because we come from very different countries and talk very different languages. So we prepared a questionnaire in English, and we also prepared two versions of the questionnaire, one plain English version for professionals, and one easy language version for users. The latter was made available in Word and PDF printable formats so that users could also write down their answers instead of using a computer to answer the questions uh, we prepared. So now we can move to the other slide, which is about the core uh, questions of the questionnaire. I'll try to make this clear because it's a very important point. We asked almost the same questions to users and to professionals in order to assess how frequently professionals use a given set of strategies and to what extent users find the same set of strategies helpful when they talk and when they wish to interact in a spoken, easy language setting. So same questions, different language varieties, um, and different points of view, users and professionals. As you can see here uh, on the slide, we explored um, five sets of main sets of strategies that are supposed to improve communication efficacy and clarity. And these strategies um, have to uh, five sets. These strategies have to do with, you know, uh, the textual and um, organizational level of communication. They were also, we tested also linguistic, specifically linguistic strategies, such as, for instance, the use of word repetition. We also uh, explored non linguistic strategies such as, for instance, the use of louder voice to emphasize um, words or concepts. We um, explored strategies that attract the attention of listeners in a communication setting. And finally, we tested the use of supporting material in easy language communication settings. Now, to collect data, this is a Mm, this is a technical slide, I think, but I explain it in my own words. So to collect data, we used uh, the web survey creator tool, a survey tool online. Then we extracted data to Excel, to an Excel spreadsheet. Then Drago Bruman, who's here, and I thank him very much for this huge work, our data analysis loaded this Excel data to a special software, Microsoft Power BI, that turned the Excel data, which most of you probably know, you know, all these numbers and uh, cells and columns, into a coherent and visually very effective data set. And here you've got a couple of slides just to, you know, get an idea of, of what he did from Excel into this very visually effective 
data set that we use to, you know, discover what was important and what uh, users and professionals think about uh, easy spoken language. Now, what happened? Um, oh, that's another um, screenshot. What happens in Europe overall? Uh, 40, sorry, over 446 respondents, mainly aged 31 to 50, and from 15 European countries completed the questionnaire. And we are very happy about this number. It's a very big number for us, for our type of research. 73% of the respondents were female respondents and 180 80 were users, 266 were professionals. So now what have we learned uh, from their feedback? First, that patience is paramount. It's very important. Can't remember, okay, it's, it's very important. Here you can read some comments uh, that users wrote on the questionnaires. So patience is important, and in fact, literature in general terms confirms that pauses in communication allow people to retain words, but also messages better. But it also can have, and this is interesting, a very calming effect on listeners, and that's probably the reason why users like uh, to be given time. They like patience, they like to have, you know, extra time. Conversely, talking fast and too loudly um, is usually associated with anger or sometimes an aggressive attitude. This puts users off, it puts users off and it, present, and it prevents users from staying focused on what is being said. It prevents users from feeling you know, comfortable and from understanding content, uh, irrespective of whether professionals use louder voice for a positive reason. So perception and intentions can be very different here. Three, um, users appreciate repetition a lot, but, and I think this is the interesting point, professionals find it very difficult to rephrase complex words and ideas. They sometimes wrote down on, on the questionnaires. I know I have to rephrase difficult ideas, but it's difficult to find other words to say the same thing. And so that was their main difficulty. And this, I think, points to the need for prioritizing uh, paraphrasing techniques in, e in easy language training in general, uh, no matter whether easy language will be then applied uh, to spoken language or to written language. And four professionals give uh, feedback very often and users legitimately ask for feedback in their free comments. You can see just a couple here, but there's plenty of comments uh, by users uh, saying, ask me if I have understood, ask if I understand, check if I'm following. So it's very much appreciated. But more importantly, users uh, wish to feel important, to feel respected, to feel comfortable, to feel at ease. And they do not like to be interrupted because, you know, they lose the thread of, of their message and they get confused. The most important thing here, however, is that users seem to crave eye contact, which is a form of nonverbal communication that we use, that humans use to communicate many forms of emotions. This brings us to Sorry, this brings us towards <clears throat> the conclusion of, of my uh, part of this talk, but also <clears throat> to the main difficulties of users, which apparently are expressing emotions and disagreeing. This, you know, is a very difficult uh, part of the communication for, for users. And this is a finding that, again, 
points to where we should probably concentrate in future research, the language of emotion, right? The right language of emotion, the easy language of, of emotion. And this, is, and this is important, especially because professionals also find it very or equally difficult to decode or to recognize the needs, thoughts and emotions of users and also to adapt their communication in a suitable way because they do not know where they are. They cannot see what's going on. And so they go on with their way of simplifying language without uh, knowing what could be best or what uh, users think about what they are saying. So uh, this is a very, uh, succinct set of findings, but it's a set of findings that seems to nudge us, uh, not even so gently, into recognizing, reconsidering, and giving probably more weight to perception, attitude, and also nonverbal communication, but also to scene setting, to creating the right environment uh, of communication, uh, which should be the biggest slice of the cake in our spoken easy language recommendations, which is the final aim of the CELSI project. CELSI, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Partners are Zavo Trisa, RTV Slovenia, Dyslexi Verbundet, Universita degli Studi di Trieste, Vieglas Valodas Agentura, Vilnius Universitetas, Vsi Informatios Kaupimo Irsklaidos Centras, funded by the European Union.